blank. You know, I kind of worried this was going to happen. Welcome back to Northwind Aerial, the show all about drones and the fun, fantastic, and oftentimes stupid things we can do with them. Today, we are not going into the air. We are actually going underwater. I would like to present the QYC Five Fish V Evo, a very affordable underwater drone, or mostly as they're known, ROVs, remotely operated vehicles. ROVs are essentially submersible drones that are tethered. Radio communication does not go through water, pretty much at all. This is why ROVs, submersible drones, have a tether system onto them. This submersible ROV is rated up to 300 feet deep, which is the length of the cable. The cable attaches right here on the back with this loop that goes around the tail fin and then tightens down. That way, when you're retrieving the drone, you're pulling from the tail fin, which is a part of the frame of the drone, and you're not pulling from just the control cable that attaches in back here. The control cable just mounts on here nice and easy. Keep it a little bit stable, and you just screw it all the way in until it's nice and flush. And there you go. You're pretty much ready for deep sea exploration. This drone does not have a external battery that you can pull out and swap like the drones we're used to with flying. It has a inbuilt internal battery that once it runs out, the drone needs to be pulled up on land and charged. To plug in the charger, simply unscrew the command cable and plug the charger right into your standard wall outlet. Now, in order to turn this drone on, you simply take the controller and plug the other end of the cable spool directly in. And similar to DJI drones, all you have to do, hold down the power button. You don't have to double tap and hold, you just hold. And it'll sing little songs of its people to you to show that it is now hooked up. Now, this is a great setup. I love this setup, but it falls into one of the traps that I constantly am complaining about with mostly older model DJI drones, but we still experience a little bit to this day, which is the fact that this whole setup requires a phone to control it. I like to keep all of my electronics completely separate. I don't like having to pull up an app on my phone, mount it to a controller, and then use that to fly my drone or pilot my submarine. So one big complaint I have about this setup is the fact that I have to take out my phone, which is scratched and dirty and has dust all over it. And I have to expose it to the elements by mounting it into the controller like this. Ideally, I would love to have a controller that's more waterproof. They specifically say this controller is not waterproof at all. I prefer to have something built up more along the lines like the RC Pro or the RC Plus from DJI where the screen is built in and the controller has a lot better IP rating than this. But again, we're going for budget. Now that you have your you have your controller hooked up to your spool, hooked up to your drone, so you're going to open your QYC app, ensure that you are hooked up to the Fifish Wi-Fi, and then boom, you are hooked up to the drone itself. From here, you can operate the camera, you can set the photos, the videos, the everything you want to play around with it. So this model has several different types of attachments you can mount onto it. Um, I personally went with the manipulator arm because that's what I'm gonna be using for search and rescue more often than not. Whether it's going to be grabbing and retrieving items from the bottom, unfortunately, sometimes retrieving drowning victims, this seemed like the most bang for your buck. And I thought it was gonna be very hard to get a hold of, to, I thought it was gonna be very hard to control. It's literally this. You got the rocker switch on there, You're good to go, oh God. So let's get this into the water and I'll show you kind of some cool stuff that I've done recently with it. All right, so to test out the grabbing manipulator arm of the uh, V Evo ROV, Aladdin here has volunteered to go swimming. So he's gonna take a dive in over there and uh, 
swim all the way down to the bottom and then we're gonna come rescue him. See how well the arm pulls him up. Um, he obviously is not the same weight as a human, but uh, between the physics of being underwater and him hopefully soaking up a fair amount of the water, we should be able to at least get a pretty good idea. Walk the plank. <laughs> I was kind of worried this was going to happen. Sink for a video. Under water. Drown, damn you. All right, so I went and found a couple of spare level four plates I had laying around that are still a little small, but uh, it hopefully should add a little bit of weight to make them sink and help simulate a little better of uh, body weight as well. I think it's right around 30 or so pounds. I could weigh it, but uh, no. If this doesn't sink our little Navy SEAL here, uh, I'm not sure what will. It only took three plates, but we successfully drowned our uh, little friend right here. What a terrible sentence. Um, he's still kind of suspended in the water column, mostly because of his buoyancy. So part of me wants to add on another plate, just to add on a little more weight. But we're going to go ahead and uh, test and see how well the V-Evo can grab a semi-buoyant person, which would make sense, honestly, due to how long the victim might have been underwater when they start, sorry to get morbid here folks, when they start decomposing and start having a buildup of gas in their body, that's what causes them to race to the surface. So this was kind of simulate, at least in my best guess, someone who's been underwater in warm water for about one to two, maybe three days. We'll see how well it works. If you've done any manual or acro mode flying on an FPV drone, you'll feel right at home behind the sticks of this ROV. It handles like any standard drone would that you would be flying through the air, except for you have to really look out for the pitch, yaw, and roll a lot more than you normally would. There are multiple different flight settings you can have for the ROV though, so it's just a matter of finding out which one works best for you. I was a little slow going out on this practice retrieval and it took me a bit to get lined up perfectly, mainly because I was holding the command spool reel with my feet. This is definitely a two person job. After talking to some of my search and rescue friends who have done retrievals with ROVs before, they've mentioned they generally like to grab around the wrist area and do a kind of Superman pull up to recover unfortunate fatalities from the water. I elected to go for the strap on the plate carrier because I just looked like a great place to grab. I definitely need a lot more practice on flying this drone underwater, but the fact it really only took me about two or three attempts to lock on, I'm going to count that as a win. Once I was firmly clamped to the body, however, I cut power to the thrusters and simply pulled on the tether hand over hand to pull the body all the way to the side of the pool. It was honestly so easy to make the recovery that I thought the dummy was going to weigh not nearly enough to give a good idea of how much an actual body recovery would go, but once I got it to the side, it was evident just how much it truly weighed. As you can see, there's really no weight on this. I expect this to be a lot harder. I mean, he's got three uh, level four plates in his armor right now. I have a pipe. This. Oh my god. Look at that. Successful retrieval. Some of the other things I've used this ROV for is retrieving lost tools that have fallen into one of the tanks at our fire department that uh, no one else could get down into to grab. I was able to grab a steamer cap, a spanner wrench, and a rubber mallet all from the bottom. This water pit is about 8 feet deep and about 4 feet underground and is completely sealed off iron chamber. 
It's used for pump testing the engines. The fire engines draft or suck water out of the underground tank and then flow it through their engine pump for a certain amount of time to ensure that everything is working perfectly. While working around the engines, it's not uncommon for tools to get dropped in, and this little ROV made for the perfect retrieval device to bring them back to the surface and put them back into service. I've also used the ROV to explore a local lake. It was quite muddy and made for poor visibility at times, but we were still able to spot more than one fish, which was a very neat experience. I expected the fish to run or swim for the hills when it came to seeing the drone, but they didn't seem too bothered by it at all. The murkiness of the water really hammered home just how much underwater drones could benefit from a sonar attachment though, if you have the money. I've also unfortunately already had to deploy this ROV on a search and rescue mission to locate and identify a vehicle that was submerged underwater. A very strong current made controlling the drone hard, but we were still able to deploy it upstream from a boat and drift it backwards to mark precisely where our dive team needed to enter the water and secure a line to the vehicle with which to recover it. Once my main work slows down again, I'm looking forward to taking this out to much deeper lakes and really putting it through more tests. So the camera on this drone can record all the way up to 4K 60 frames per second. It films really, really high quality stuff underwater. I would absolutely use this just for plain exploration of lakes and caverns and even the ocean this is rated for. You can also fly this drone, fly, you can also fly this drone with VR goggle capabilities, which I got a cheap pair of VR goggles that your phone slides into, finally found the settings to change it over into this and was kind of underwhelmed. I think it suffers from the same problem as the hooking the phone up to the controller. All I saw was dust. I couldn't get the controller right. I had to take off half the case to get it to fit. I'm not a big fan of it. I think it's got a long ways to go. Well, not a long ways, just make something like the DJI goggles that are set up for transmission. I just do away with using the phones. I'd happily spend a little bit more to have all that computing processor, have all of the video feed go through the controller or through a pair of goggles dedicated to the drone. Using phones just, it leads to just too many issues. One thing to note about this drone is it does perform adequately well in current. I would say up to probably 1500 cubic feet per minute flow. We had a mission recently where I used this and the current was right around 20 to 50 cubic feet per minute in the canal we were searching and it was a nightmare. The entire drone, just I could not even turn in the water. It would be headed downstream, and if I tried to turn, it was just not working. It still worked good for going up and down, but side to side was a no-go. So this particular model is going to excel fantastic in lakes, especially any lakes that are shallower than 300 feet. I highly recommend it. It has forward-facing headlights with two different settings that illuminate stuff quite well. Once you start stirring up the muck and mire on the bottom of the lake, it doesn't work as great, but that's just the nature of working underwater. If you're gonna use this on any sort of mission, I highly recommend having a minimum of two people with you. Having one person to fly the drone underwater and having one other person to help spool this out, keep it from getting tangled, reel it up, and just plain hold on to it so it doesn't get pulled off when the drone is going underway, that's that's what I would really recommend. This is more of a two-person operation than your standard flying aerial drone that you can pretty much do with by yourself. There are HDMI splitters available for all of this so that it can be broadcast to a larger TV. That's something I'm looking at getting more set up on, but it's something I have no knowledge of exactly how it works right now. But look for that hopefully in a future video once I've got a bit more time uh, actually out and about with this. Um, I probably got about six hours or so flight time with this total by this point. Um, it works phenomenal. I'm actually a really huge fan of it. So if you're looking to get your start into underwater drones or ROVs, I think I'd really recommend this setup. If you can splurge and get something a little bit better, absolutely. But if you're just wanting to get a start with your search and rescues program of underwater exploration, search, rescue, recovery, I think this is a really great place to start. But even if you're not in emergency services and you want to get into the world of underwater exploration, 
I really recommend this. I am thoroughly impressed with it. This is a great way to get a start into underwater exploration. The videos, photos are high quality. I so far haven't gotten it too wrapped around something. I couldn't go back and retrieve it, but hey, that could happen. So be careful when you're out there. But regardless, thoroughly impressed with the QYC Five Fish V Evo. It's a mouthful to say, but I wanted to get it all out there. As a reminder, just like every other video so far, I am not sponsored by them at all. I purchased this with my own money. They have not asked me to say anything about it. This is just the words and experiences of a search and rescue member who's trying to make the world a better place with it and tell everyone else about it. If you enjoyed this episode of Northwind Aerial, consider giving a like, consider subscribing. What other underwater ROV drones should I check out? Is there something I'm missing? Leave them in the comments. Until then, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.